Today, we're going to be looking at the making of this hand wheel and more specifically, how I created this square knurling. I didn't use a knurling tool and we'll get into how I did produce it shortly. But first, I'd like to give a little more context on what I'm trying to achieve here and what this hand wheel is going to be used for. When filming around the workshop, I use this arm to mount the camera. It's got a sturdy clamp on one end, it's got a camera mount on the other, and you can move the camera around in several degrees of freedom. And once you've found the position you like, you use this knob in the middle to lock the arm together. I'm sure you've all seen these Noga style indicator arms, which work on exactly the same principle. The problem I've got with this camera arm is that the locking mechanism has failed. The knob just free spins and it fails to lock the actual arm. After a little investigation, the culprit appears to be this brass nut cast into the back of the knob. The threads have stripped, which is why the knob free spins, and it doesn't seem possible to change that nut without destroying the knob. Why the manufacturer made this design choice is puzzling to me because it seems like an obvious point of failure. This arm is quite expensive, so I don't want to throw it away, so I'm just going to try a nut and see how that works. Now that does lock the mechanism, but every time I need to reposition the camera, I need to find the wrench and hold the camera with one hand, the wrench with the other, and that is gonna get old pretty quickly, so let's just make another knob. I found a piece of aluminium in my scrap bin that should do the job. It's a bit bigger than the original knob, which is actually a good thing because it will give us more leverage, hopefully making the mechanism easier to lock. Now, other than the knurling, this should be a fairly simple turning operation. But one thing I do need to deal with first is the thread. I can't simply thread this aluminium because it will just strip again. So I'm going to make a cylindrical nut out of steel, then bore a hole in the aluminium and inset the nut with Loctite. And it was at about this point in the editing process of this video that I realised I'd pulled a classic Jonesy and accidentally deleted all of the footage of me boring the hole and fitting this nut. But we can see the nut fitted in the finished item. Anyway, let's talk about something more interesting, i.e. knurling. This is my knurling tool and it's a scissor type knurling tool. You mount this in the tool post of your lathe and you open up the scissors. The scissors clamp down on the rotating workpiece in the lathe and the knurl is cut. Now that's all well and good until you consider the diameter of the workpiece we want to knurl. This clearly does not compute, so we're going to need to find a different way. And I was recently looking at this book by George H. Thomas, and this is a real classic for us model engineers here in the UK. And in it, he describes square knurling and his process for creating those square knurls. And the way he does it is to first create a straight knurl with one of these push-in style knurlers, and to come back in with a 90 degree chamfer tool and cut grooves in the opposite direction to the straight knurl. Now I'm gonna take a slightly different approach to this for two reasons. Number one, I don't have a straight knurl tool. And number two, I want a coarser pattern because I've got a larger diameter workpiece. So my plan is to use this tool turned on its side to machine the grooves that go across the part. Then I should turn the tool around and machine grooves at 90 degrees to these in the circumference of the part. I made this prototype indexing head for the lathe a few videos back, and we're gonna to need to use this to make sure that we get consistent spacing between our horizontal grooves. If you're interested to know more about how this tool was made or how to use it, I'll leave a link in the description to the video on that subject. So now it's time to start cutting our first set of grooves. And I've just realized that I've lost the footage for that too in the great memory card blunder. Nice one, Jonesy. So there's nothing else for it other than to stage a dramatic reconstruction with this extra piece of stock that I've got. I'll let you know when normal service is resumed. So the first order of the day is to clean up the surfaces on our imposter part, set our tool on center height, and lock the lathe spindle with the indexing head. I touch off on the work and set the DRO to zero. I then dial in some depth of cut and we're ready to make our first pass, which I do by simply winding the carriage back and forth. I then repeat this procedure, making multiple passes until we reach our desired depth of cut of two millimeters. Now that first groove is finished, it's time to index our work around. And in this case, I'm going to be indexing it around by three degrees. And then it's just a case of rinse and repeat. And obviously we continue with this process until we've made it all around the cylinder. Now I won't subject you to that. Instead, we'll go back to our original part and cut the grooves in the other direction. 
I'm using the same tool here. I've just flipped it around and reset the center height. And we're cutting our first groove to a depth of two millimeters and two millimeters in from the edge. Now I've got the depth established, I go back out and chamfer that outer edge. Then I proceed to cut the rest of the grooves at two millimeter intervals. And we've got a few birds to deal with, so I'm going to do a very light facing cut across the whole part. And that's looking a lot better, I think. We've still got this ragged edge where I uh, chamfered the edge of the part, so we'll clean that up next. And that feels much nicer now. The next thing I'd like to do is use this button tool here to create an aesthetic recess in the face of the part. The next thing to do is the parting operation. And my plan here was to go as deep as I could with the parting tool and then finish the cut with the bandsaw. I ended up not getting as deep as I wanted to with the parting blade here because it wasn't cutting well and it kept jamming up. But looking back at the footage here, I can see clearly why I was running the lathe way too quickly. Now I fell at the first hurdle with the uh, bandsaw, as you can see here, I can't actually fit the part in the vise. Because the jaws are different widths, there's just not enough material to grab hold of. So that is a massive fail on the forward planning front. Over to plan B. Around this time, I was questioning my life choices, but after a lot of hard work, a couple of broken blades and some choice curse words, I managed to get the job done. And I made a mandrel so I could mount it back in the lathe to face the other side. I then used that button tool to create another aesthetic recess, but this time on the front of the hand wheel. And to finish the piece off, I'm going to engrave my logo with the laser. And this is our finished hand wheel, and I'm really pleased with the way it's come out. I'm especially pleased with this knurling. If you look really closely, there are still a few micro burrs, which I shall clean up with a brass wire brush. But otherwise, it's really clean, and it feels great in the hand. It feels really grippy without being sharp, which is exactly what I was looking for. It's the first time I've tried this technique, and given that you can adjust the size and the spacing and the depth of the knurls, I think it's got the potential to be a really versatile technique, so I can see myself using it on a number of projects in the future. So, time for a test drive. It's much easier to actuate than the previous knob was due to the additional leverage, and it locks the mechanism more securely than before. But let's see how it performs with the weight of the camera on it. And that works perfectly, I couldn't be happier. So that's been a really satisfying little project. I've managed to rescue my expensive camera arm whilst also improving its performance. And I've learned a valuable new skill in this new knurling technique. If you've enjoyed the video, please do hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. I'd like to say a big thanks to you for watching till the end and an extra special thanks to all my patrons that are making this possible. Catch you on the next video.